Hi, I'm Steve, and over here is Guy, and we are about ready to head to Kentucky Lake on the Illinois River, Mississippi River, Ohio River, and Tennessee River. And this is where we're going to be living for the next few days. It's over here on this pontoon boat. Wish us luck. It turns out we did have good luck as we only waited for a couple hours for the first lock at Marseilles, after which we enjoyed a beautiful sunset on our way to the Starve Rock Marina. This was the first of eight locks we would have to encounter and was the longest wait. The elevation difference is about 25 feet. We were allowed to lock down with a towboat, which is lucky because many have hazardous materials and pleasure boats can't go through the lock with them. Starve Rock State Park at dawn. It's a little foggy this morning. Say hello, Captain Guy. Hello. <laughs> the fog quickly lifted and gave way to the sunrise on our starboard stern. We made our way through Utica, Peru, and Spring Valley on calm water and perfect weather. It was the perfect time to make some coffee using the single burner camp stove that we had on board. It was Friday morning, so we were the only pleasure boat besides a Grand Banks trawler that had been following us since we left our home port. We may have seen a couple of fishing boats too. As we passed the town of Depew, we came across a large lake next to the river. We're about three miles north of Henry, and the river opens up into this big body of water over here on the starboard side of the boat. This huge lake that goes on for miles to the north. I'm not sure how deep it is, but it's huge. So we motored on through Hennepin and Henry, we were really in Henry this time, and Lacone until we reached Chillicothe, where the river started to widen. This low quality video is from a text message, and there's a few more clips like this in this video. beginning of Upper Peoria Lake.
After 120 miles, we reached the Tall Timbers Marina in Havana, Illinois. It's a small marina with a fuel dock and a restaurant. We showed up without reservations, but they had a couple transient slips available. The bar had some interesting decor, and we met some very nice people, including Bob, who owns and operates this marina with his wife since they built it. This 46-foot Grand Banks trawler left Seneca at the same time we did. We enjoyed hanging out with the crew and learned that they were traveling from Ohio with a destination of Minnesota. They also had some valuable information about one of our planned fuel stops, Hoppy's Marina, which had been damaged in the high waters of the Mississippi River flood and was not operational. Hearing this in advance kept us from being stranded in Kimswick two days later. We left all timbers at 6.30 a.m. along with the Carpe Diem. We traveled in close proximity for a while until some ETA calculations dictated that we needed to increase our speed in order to make it to the next fuel stop in Alton before they closed. We sped past the Carpe Diem and never saw them again. We picked a good day to go fast since the water was calm and the wind was light. Along the way, we saw some homes and businesses that still had sandbags around them from the flood. After 122 miles on the Illinois River and 13 on the Mississippi, 
we finally made it to Alton, Illinois, where we would stay for the night. Good morning. We are at the Alton Marina in Alton, Illinois, next to the Mississippi River. And this is where we had stayed last night in our 24-foot Harris pontoon. We have the boat set up to stay on with pretty much all the necessities we'll need. We're carrying extra fuel because the boat's onboard capacity isn't sufficient to reach our next destination, which is Paducah, Kentucky, which is 260 miles. You can see that it's pretty spacious. We're not crowded by any means. We have a camp stove to cook. Two coolers, which are holding the ice tremendously well in this 90 degree weather. There's a view of the Alton Bridge which looks spectacular at night when it's all lit up. And that's it for now. We will catch you on the next video. We will hopefully be going by the Gateway Arch in St. Louis. The Alton Marina is a modern facility with an abundance of information and amenities for cruisers. They have a fuel dock, ship store, restaurant, and a pool. We opted for dinner at the restaurant as we would be roughing it for the next couple nights. We also needed to make it to some place to buy gas cans as we would need more fuel for the trip. They offered us a cab service which would take us to Walmart where we were able to purchase the cans. Situated almost under the Alton Bridge, we were offered stunning views of the sunset and the illuminated bridge after taking a dip in their floating swimming pool. At this point in our journey, we were nearly halfway to our destination and had traveled already 260 miles. The next morning, we had a hearty breakfast on the boat while the wildlife hoped we would share. A trip to the parking lot to dump our trash revealed how high the water had been recently. We returned to the boat then to wait for the next lock. This is the Mel Price Lock and Dam. And we are actually under power, hovering because the current is so strong here. We've probably got to go about three miles an hour just to keep from going backwards into this dam while we wait for this barge to pull out. And on the other side is that Alta Bridge. That's how close it is. We are now in the canal that leads to the, leads to the lock at Granite City. It goes around the Chain of Rocks Canal, and this is the Chain of Rocks Canal, I'm not really sure. On the other side, it gets really rapid and shallow. We have about 10 miles to go in a channel that looks just like this. It's narrow, but it's deep. It's 35 feet deep here. And there's no current, so we lost all of our hope from the current to go any faster. So we are uh, under power using a little more fuel for the next 10 miles. Then we got Captain Guy back here, manning the helm. 
As we cruise along, say hello, Captain Guy. Hello. We got about 15 miles before we get to St. Louis, and then we'll be back with the Gateway Arch. It's interesting to note that these gates on the high side of the, of the lock, they come up from the bottom and then the ones on the low side are hinged or swinging gates, uh, which is something that we don't have in Illinois. It's a little bit different. Here we go.
goes as fast as you can. We've got barges on both sides parked along here, which makes it pretty rough in the middle. And it's windy. But the current's moving pretty fast through here, so we should be able to zoom through without burning a whole lot of extra fuel. We decided to anchor in a small channel off the river about 40 miles south of Kimsler, Missouri. The current was still very strong and we could not set a stern anchor because it was planing it would not sink even after attaching more weight to it. We picked a great spot to witness another beautiful sunset after which we cooked some chicken shish kebabs on the grill. The weather the next day was cold and rainy. This was the result of the Gulf moisture from Tropical Storm Barry. It would persist for the next two days. seas right now. You can tell right here. It's like four foot waves. It has been for like the last hour. This wind, we're heading right into the wind and it's just creating these monster waves. Something you'd see more like on Lake Michigan than the Mississippi River. White caps everywhere. Every time a barge goes by we're getting like five foot swells. We've had to pop this front on a couple of times already. Well guy has now he's soaked the water. It's going to end soon, but the wind isn't, unfortunately. After battling the wind and the waves for a while, we arrived in Cape Girardeau. So we are here at the Kid River Fuel Dock in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. 
Now, Cape Girardeau was actually behind this flood wall. And on a good day, when the river is not completely flooded, there's gates to walk through it. Or even these stairs at the end of this catwalk. But this is so flooded that you're not even going to get this today. This dock has a diesel pump, but no gasoline. So we are just moored here in order to transfer some fuel from our portable tanks into our gas tank in here in the back corner. And then maybe we'll make it all the way without having to do this again. Because this may be our only docking stop along the way. Thanks for listening. So we left Cape Girardeau, and after about an hour, we started to look for a place to settle for the night. We ended up choosing a beach in a side channel, which would give us an opportunity to stretch our legs during the breaks in the rain. Being so close to shore, we zipped up the enclosure before turning on the lights and attracting the bugs. We didn't get a sunset this time, but managed to get a good time lapse of the clouds and the moon. The next day brought us more wind and rain, and waves. Lucky for us though, the river offered us several side channels, or chutes, that allowed us to escape the harsh wind and waves in the main part of the river. We also avoided the barges, as these passages are too narrow and shallow for them. The Angelo chute would be our last escape from the mighty Mississippi as we neared the Ohio River. down the Angelo chute on our way back over to the Mississippi River these chutes kind of go in and out of some of these curves and a lot of them cut off a lot of our mileage um, during high water we can pass these no problem uh, when the water is back down to normal levels there's all kinds of dams and things in the way here <clears throat> and this isn't normally passable uh, for uh, boat traffic because of the, uh, the dams. Uh, but this is going to save us like two miles to go through here on this one, so it's a good choice. And when we pop out, we'll be coming right up on the confluence of the uh, Mississippi and the Ohio rivers, uh, and then it's going to be upriver for the next 45 miles. So this is it up here. We're coming out of this chute into the Mississippi River. And beyond that is where the Mississippi meets the Ohio. This bridge up here is a state road that leads into Cairo. And off to the first side, to the left, for you land lovers, um, is Cairo, Illinois. If you follow this bridge over uh, into Cairo, it will go to another bridge, which goes over the Ohio uh, into Whitcliffe, Kentucky. And the reason I know this so well is because just a few weeks back, we got detoured and had to take this route uh, to get back onto the uh, interstate, uh, which we saw the bridge earlier. So this is it. This is where the Ohio meets the Mississippi. This is where our Mississippi River trip ends and our Ohio River journey begins. Go left for Ohio, right for Mississippi.
We're going to find a big swirl here where the downriver meets the upriver. Captain Guy is doing a fantastic job of piloting the boat here. Ohio River, here we go! Here is the southernmost tip of Illinois. You can't get any farther south than this, right there. That direction right there is the Mississippi River. And this is the Ohio River. We are headed to Paducah, Kentucky from here. Catch up with you there. We're here on the Ohio, and there's barges just everywhere. barges are just parked here in the middle. Just anchored, waiting for someone to pick them up, presumably. You don't see too much bare shoreline. But what do you do? It's pretty looking. The wind is behind us, which is favorable because it gives us a uh, Pretty good boost in speed and fuel economy. But if we were against these waves, it'd be pretty awful. They're like two to three footers. as far as the eye can see. And with the zoom feature, you can see pretty far. But you can't tell because I'm using a stabilizing gimbal, but it's pretty rough out here. And now it's starting to rain, so I'm gonna shut it down. The Ohio River was high enough so that the Olmstead Dam was down, allowing us to drive over it and the remains of Lock 53. Wicket dams are a wonderful thing when the water is high. We were able to pass over the Peoria and LaGrange dams in the same way. As we approached Paducah, the sun started to come out, giving Ganser and Aurora an opportunity for a photo op. We watched the depth sounder as we passed over the remains of Dam 52. We were surprised at the difference in depth of 100 feet. Late in the afternoon, we arrived at the Paducah Visitor's Dock to transfer some fuel and stretch our legs. So we've made it to the Paducah Visitor's Dock. 
here in downtown Paducah, Kentucky. It's a pretty nice dock. It's got uh, fuel and pump out facilities. Yes, for uh, and uh, fresh water. Dock is pretty new, a couple years maybe at the most. And a ramp that goes up into the river walk area. And if you wanted to take a short walk, there's a holiday in there. big building that hangs out over the water is the convention center. They got big pilings here, they got big rollers that roll along them as this thing floats up and down. These spots over here can be reserved. They all have electrical and water. But we're not staying. We're going to motor on as soon as we transfer some fuel. So we'll see you in the next one. After leaving the dock at Paducah, we turned right onto the Tennessee River. This part of the river was mostly industrial. The current was significantly slower than the Ohio, and the water was calm, which gave us the opportunity to gaze upon the large fleet of parked and dry dock towboats. We arrived at the Kentucky Dam and radioed the Lockmaster. At first, we were looking at a three hour wait to lock up, but after about 15 minutes and a conversation with the towboat captain who was scheduled before us, he decided to lock us up ahead with the help of the We are inside the main chamber of the Kentucky Dam lock. And it goes way up there. I don't know what the, the elevation is on this one, but you can see the water line. And each one of those water lines is probably eight feet, those concrete lines. So 40 feet it looks like. Right now it's kind of scary looking being back here like this. There's a lot of water behind that.
after five days and 540 miles, we finally made it to Kentucky Lake. Since our reservation wasn't until Thursday at Morris Marina, we decided to cut over to Lake Barkley and stay at Green Turtle Bay. After a good night's sleep, we woke up to some of the local wildlife. Here is one of the hundreds of turtles that lives in this marina. Most of them were near the restaurant where people would feed them, though. Lake Barkley is part of the Cumberland River, and since we were here early, we decided to explore this lake first. Hubby's and Buzzard Rock were the two places we checked out first. This is the Kentucky Dam Marina, where high winds damaged this dock a few weeks earlier. These two sections should be connected. This little quarry is over 100 feet deep, and we spent a lot of time in here swimming and watching people jump off the rock cliffs. We spent some time here Thursday afternoon watching people jump off this cliff. Later, we met my wife Jennifer and daughter Gigi at Moore's Marina, along with our friend Tim. And we spent the next couple days enjoying the area until we packed up and trailered the boat back to Seneca. The wedgie comment seems to be pretty uh, common. A few jump off of here. 